the idea of application allow listing is rather than trying to block everything that's bad in our environment, what we do is we create a list of what needs to run and we block everything else. So malware is just software, but also in addition to malware, remote access tools, games, backup tools, all of these can be used by attackers to gain access to our system. So it's really important as an IT professional to make sure the only software that can run in your environment is software that you trust. Now, in order to get to a situation where we're only allowing trusted software, there are a few steps that we need to take. So the first step is we need to deploy an agent and learn what software is required on our endpoint. So to do that, we go onto the computers page here, we click install computer and we can download the installer. You can use an MSI, you can use scripts, you can use plugins to RMMs or software deployment tools, all of the options there. It only takes a couple of minutes to install the agent. Once the agent's installed, the next step is we need to learn what software is required in our environment because if we just block everything by default without knowing what is required, our users are going to get very upset with us. So the next step is we're going to put the computer in a learning mode and that will happen automatically when you deploy Threat Locker. Now during this learning period, we're going to start to log every single execution on your machine. Every DLL, every script file, everything that's running is going to be logged in one central place here. The next step is we're going to build out a list of applications that you're running based on this list. Now there's two types of applications we're going to build out here. The first one are those known common applications. So ThreatLocker has data on tens of thousands of of applications. So we're going to create those policies here and many of them will have this built-in flag next to them. Now what's cool about this built-in flag is not only are we allowing this application to run but we're actually going to make sure we allow all future versions. So ThreatLocker's team of, in ThreatLocker Labs are going to download the latest versions of 7-Zip, of Office, of all of the Windows updates and we're going to make sure that the definition is updated. So if you have a policy for Office, the new version of Office is going to run as well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna give you extra information about the software you found and you can filter and do other things here with that uh, extra information. So you could say, for example, I wanna know all shopping tools that are on my machines and I can click on that and it will give me a list of everything now. I can filter by country, I can filter by what it has access to and other information like that. So in this case, we can see that Cooper has been allowed on our machine. Cooper would have access to our passwords in our browser, our web data. Now, after the learning period, the next thing we want to do is we actually want to lock down the computer. Now, in order to do that, we just literally go into here, switch from learning to secured mode. And once it's locked down, nothing will be able to run in your environment that isn't trusted. That means no games, no remote access tools, and no malware, including ransomware. Now, in addition to this, before we lock down, if we're worried that users are going to get things broken or we're worried about dev users or certain users that might get upset, we can actually do a simulation to say, show me everything that would have been denied during this period of time during my learning period. Now, in this case, I see nothing. So I've switched into secured mode. And what happens next? The next thing is if a user wants to run new software, they can literally double click on the application here and they can request access to the software. Now, when they're requesting access to the software, you'll notice there's additional information for the user. So if they're requesting access to that coupon clipper, we can see, hey, do you want to request access to this coupon clipper that can see your passwords? So I can send this request, I can put a reason in here now, and as the IT administrator, I can very easily approve that. I can approve it from my phone, I can approve it from the portal, or it will even integrate into tickets in systems such as ServiceNow or other systems like that. In this case, I can see that the user has requested access to Putty and I can approve it in a single click. And when I do approve this application, the user will get a pop-up within about 30 seconds saying your new application has been approved and you can run that application. You see how fast that was. Now, if a user does request access to something bad, so I'm gonna pick on this Google update, for example, here, you as the administrator have a few options to check the file. You can see full complete details. In this case, it claims to be Google Update. It's not signed by Google, which is a big red flag. Also, ThreatLocker is saying we do not recognize this as a Google application. We have this option to run the application in a testing environment. What this means is we're going to take that file, we're going to copy it up to the internet, and we're going to allow you to run it in a dedicated sandbox to make sure it doesn't blow up or do anything bad. So when I double click on this and now run this Google update, we'll start seeing these traffic lights across the top turn red. And there's a couple of things here. The first thing is we've got this virus total. Now when we click on the virus total, it's going to check this file and any files it creates against known malware databases. 
And you can see here that it's now creating this test virus in the background and we're seeing all of this malware created. In addition to this, this application itself, this Google update, is actually changing files on my system. So we've flagged an alert saying it's changing files and it's also created something in the startup folder, which is again, another big alert. Now, if this was a good application and it had 200 dependencies, we could actually end and capture this and it would capture all of the files for us and we wouldn't have to go to the user's machine and permit each DLL separately. But because this is bad, I'm just going to click the discard button here. Now, in this case, this is a bad application, so we've decided not to permit it. Again, just to recap, the idea of application allow listing is we only allow the software we need and we block everything else. That means no malware can run, no games can run, no coupon clippers can run. What ThreatLocker allows you to do is a, a very simple way of deploying and managing this. We essentially deploy an agent, we learn the files that are required on your computer, the known applications, but also the known unknown applications we're going to learn as well. We're going to create those policies for you automatically. We'll allow you to do simulations if you're concerned about users getting old school apps blocked that maybe act in strange ways. And if there are issues, we can modify them beforehand. Once we've locked down, we can see all of the applications that are running, the countries they're coming from, what the applications do, and even the CVEs. If a user does need new software, they can simply request the application and it send the request to the help desk and they can approve that in less than a minute. It's very, very simple. In addition to this, any updates, Windows updates, Office updates, Chrome updates, and thousands of other apps are automatically tracked by ThreatLocker. So as long as you're using one of our built-in policies, you don't have to worry about updating it. Now, there are really important parts of ThreatLocker that I haven't covered here, such as ring fencing, such as our network controls, such as the elevation controls, where you can allow certain programs to run as administrator. Check those videos out to find out more. And if you want to book a free demo of ThreatLocker, go to threatlocker.com, schedule a demo, and you can do a free demo and a free trial of ThreatLocker directly from there. Thank you very much for your time today.